Okay, everyone, so since we don't have class on Wednesday, I was going to go ahead and record this quick video lecture that should show you the basic workflow of working on an HTML page. Um, we were going to get to this in class on Monday, but we ran out of time, and so here we are. Um, you'll also notice on the course outline that I did move the project checkpoint deadline. So if you go look at the outline, you'll notice that the first checkpoint is now next Wednesday, September 19th. So you don't have anything due on Monday anymore. However, we are not gonna slow down with the material. We have a lot to cover in these first, uh, this first month. So go ahead and still do the reading for CSS that I have scheduled for Monday, but we'll spend a little more time talking about HTML on Monday also. Okay, so the most important thing that I think will help all of us make sure we're on the same page is if we have a consistent way that we are managing our files, especially for this first project. The easiest way I would say to do this is to just have a folder on your desktop. Whether you're using a Mac or a PC, maintaining folders is pretty much exactly the same as far as functionality and how to go about doing it. So create a new folder on your desktop, and let's go ahead and name that project one. If I can spell it right. And once you have that folder created, know that this is where all of the files for project one will live. So eventually when you're done and you're ready to put that online using an FTP like Fetch or Cyberduck to put it onto your server, you'll just be able to drag this entire folder into public underscore HTML and that will put the project on the internet. That way we don't have to worry about moving individual files, a whole bunch of folders, a whole bunch of images. We'll move one folder and all of it will move at the same time. So inside the project one folder, it might be nice to go ahead and create a couple of extra folders. We know we're gonna have images, whether it's for portfolio items or a headshot for your about page. So go ahead and create a folder called images. Eventually when we start writing CSS, we'll also need a folder called CSS. And then we'll go ahead and create a folder called pages. And that will hold all of the pages except for our index page. So now we're ready to start writing. We have our folders set up and ready to go. So now it's time to build an HTML page. Luckily, I have a template created for you on the course website resources page. So under assignments and demos, there's an HTML template. You can click that. It will download a folder called basic HTML site. And inside of that is an index.html page. Go ahead and take that index.html page and copy it and paste it into that project one folder. So now you already have an index file in your project one folder. So let's open up Atom, take it out of full screen for a second. So we have Atom open with nothing open in it technically. So we've opened Atom, yours probably has the tabs across the top that say welcome and telemetry consent. Go ahead and close all of those out. And you can drag this entire Project One folder off of your desktop, either into Adam's window like this, or onto the icon wherever it is on your computer, whether it's on this toolbar like Mac or on your desktop like PC. And that will open that folder inside of Adam so you're able to see the structure in the hierarchy. So here's that index file that we put in there and you can see it is already laid out with the basic elements for a HTML page. We have the doc type HTML tag at the top specifying that this page is going to be written in HTML5. We have the HTML element inside of which we will write all of our code that says to the browser that this stuff is being written in HTML. We have the head element that contains all of the metadata, things used by the browser 
that will help style the page eventually when we write CSS. Things like the titles, search engine optimization goes in the head, things like that. And then we have the body element, which is where we write all the things that will eventually be visualized by the browser. So we're ready to start writing. Give yourself some space inside of this body element. And the first thing we'll start with is a header. So the header element is aptly named header. And go ahead and open and close that using the opening and closing tags. And then we'll go inside and write the rest of the content in there. Menus are defined using the nav element. So I'll go ahead and put a nav element inside of that header. Remember to save periodically or every time you make a change, just so you are keeping your files up to date. And next we'll go in and we'll start building the list because menus are lists full of links. So I'm gonna use an unordered list and then each page that will be a part of this menu will be its own list item. So I'll go ahead and write a few list items here for the pages that I'm going to have on this site. So now we have a simple unordered list, though it's defined even more specifically using this nav element around it and the header element around that. So we know inside of the header, there is a navigation element that is a list. Menus are lists of links. So we'll go ahead and add an A with an href here. So we know that these links will eventually become active. We know that the home page is always going to be index.html, and we're on that page right now, so we don't have to move through any folders. So all you have to write in the quotes for the href is index.html. If you come over here to the sidebar of Atom and select this index.html file, have it highlighted and then press D on the keyboard, you're duplicating the file. So now we can use that to create multiple versions of this page. So I'll rename it about, and now I've duplicated it and have a second HTML page that's called about. If you're working in Sublime, I'm not sure if you can do that actually through Sublime, but you can also just go to your actual folder and duplicate that item and rename it whatever you need to. And I will duplicate one more and call it contact. And now we can take these extra pages that are not the index page and move them into that pages folder. So you can see I just did that here using the folder options on Atom you could also do that actually from the folder on your desktop. So we're working in the index.html page and we're gonna finish out this menu that will work correctly from this page. We know that these portfolio about and contact.html pages are in the pages folder. So when we, when we start creating these links, we need to make sure that we specify to go into those folders or into that folder to find that HTML document. So we do that by writing pages slash whatever the file name is. Now be careful if you use that auto complete function like I just did. You need to make sure that the capitalization is the same between these paths that you're writing and how you've named the files in the folder. So I'm going to go ahead and add the anchor tags around all of these elements. 
and then come back in and fill in the paths. Okay, so the menu on the index page is complete. We know that for these three pages here, the portfolio page, the about page, and the contact page, that when we click on those links, the browser needs to go into the pages folder to find those files. And that's why we have pages with the slash there. I'll go ahead and clean up some of these spaces I used to make sure I could visualize everything easier. And now that menu is done. So I'll save and come here and open my index file and you'll see that I have a list of links here at the top. And when I click to each page from the index page, you can see that it is appropriately going into the pages folder and finding those files. So now let's go to the about page. This page is in a different location than the index page, so these paths need to be a little different. To get back to the index page when we click the home link, we need to go out one folder from the one we are in, and then find the index.html file. To go back one folder, we use dot dot slash. However, the portfolio page is in the same location, so we don't need any sort of folder, path, or dot dot slash for that one once we are on the about page because we are now in the pages folder. So this one's path is just portfolio.html. And the same goes for about and contact. So now this menu is complete. We know that this menu is going to work the same regardless if we're on, we know that this menu will work the same as long as we are on about contact or portfolio.html. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it where we had the previously built menus on those other two documents. So now if we look across about contact and portfolio.html, those menus should appear exactly the same. And if we go back to index.html, we see that the first link does not have any folder directory, but the last three do. So now here outside of the header, I'm going to put a, a quick h1 that just tells me what page I'm on so I can see the menu work correctly. And notice I'm saving after I add it each time to each page. So we've added that H1 to each of those. And now we can see as we move through the pages that they are working correctly. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, obviously in this video, you can rewind that and replay it as many times as you need to. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to adding some more content. Um, <clears throat> we can start here on the home page. Let's say you're going to have a big header that says your name. I would put that in an H1, right? And then below that, you could have a paragraph that says, welcome to my site. Although that's not necessarily recommended because obviously someone is here on your site, but we'll use it for some dummy text. Now, here you can find
you will obviously use real content, but I'm using some dummy content right here. And then you might want an image. Remember, images are self-closing, so they don't need a closing tag. So you'll find an image that you're going to use and once you have that image what you need to do is save it into your images folder in the project one folder obviously don't use copyrighted images please use your own images but for the sake of this demo Obviously, please use your own original images, not anything that's copyrighted. Just for the sake of this demo, I'm using an image from the web. So I'm going to make sure that is saved in the Project One folder in the Images folder. So now we look here in the Images folder and we should have an image. And that shows up here in Atom as well. So now, Just like when we were moving to these pages here, we need to make sure we're moving into the correct folder. So from the index page, we need to go into the images folder and then find txst.jpg. So once we've done that, we can come back to the index file and refresh it and you see my paragraph and my image showing up. If we want an image on the about page, however, The way we need to write to get to that file is a little different. We are inside the pages folder now, so we need to go one folder out back to the project one folder, then into the images folder, and then find txst.jpg. So you see here that we move out one folder from pages back into project one, and then into images to find txst.jpg. So now when we go to the About page, our image shows up. One thing that might come in handy as you start building out your portfolio page is to start using divs. Remember that divs are just boxes. Remember that divs are just boxes into which we can place content. They don't necessarily have any meaning, but they're helpful when you're organizing your page. So let's say I'm a photographer outside of school and I want a section on my portfolio site or my portfolio page that's going to show off my photography. I can give this div an ID and call it photography. I can spell. And that way I know that this div is going to contain all of the things about my photography inside of it. So here I could start doing several images. And remember that images um, are self-closing. Obviously you would fill in those sources with different images, but this gives you an idea of how you can start laying out items. Alternatively, you could have another div. We can call this one journalism for different journalistic pieces that you've created. This here could be a list of links. different pieces you've written in the University Star or had published on a WordPress site, anything like that. Make sure you're filling it in with actual content. Things like that. For now, you just want to start getting a basic layout of the pieces of content that you're going to want on your site. 
so we can come back and start styling them visually, organizing them appropriately, things like that. So go ahead and give it a shot. You already know all the things you need to start putting into an HTML page. And now that we've gone over how folders should be structured for the projects in this course, you shouldn't have any issues losing pages or losing files, things like that. My Slack DMs will be open all week and weekend. Also help your friends. Um, but we'll also talk about HTML structures a little more on Monday, and then we'll get into some CSS to start styling things visually. Um, I'll find a few extra activities that you can do that will help you write HTML and CSS. <coughs> you can also compress files and send them on Slack. So if you're working on this project one file and you want to send it to me or someone else for them to look at, you can go to the you can go to the folder and right click and compress the project. And there's one more step you could do, you need to do if you're using a PC. I believe the drop down item says send to and then compress. And once you're inside Slack, you can find whomever you're going to send the DM to. Drag the zipped file and click Upload, and it will send that file to whomever you're trying to send it to. So if you get completely stuck, you're more than welcome to send me a file, and I can look at it when I get a chance. Or if you're helping a friend from class, that's totally cool too. Hopefully this helps. Um, we'll do some more demos and writing together in class on Monday also, both with and without CSS. Um, but as these things start coming together, they'll make more sense. But now that we have this basic foundation of how pages should be laid out, how to build a menu to get around between them, or get to and from them, um, hopefully things are starting to make more sense. Always let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see y'all on Monday.